popular books I will not read yet. I don't know what that was, sorry. Uh, hi guys, my name is Leonie. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna talk about popular books that I'm not gonna read. Even though there are a lot of other people that absolutely adore these books, I'm just like, no. Oh, it's popular. <laughs> I happen to not be interested in that. That makes me cooler. No, that, that's not, that's not gonna be this video. <laughs> this video is not gonna be any negativity. I see this as honesty. I think it's a good thing to just be honest to yourself and accept that sometimes there are books that you're just not interested in and that you're just never gonna get around to reading. If I don't think that a book is gonna be a four or five star read, I'm not gonna start it. Even if it's super popular, if I don't think I'm gonna absolutely love it, I'm not gonna do it just because it's popular. That's why I really like the idea of this video, you know, just be honest to yourself. You don't have to read something just because it's popular. Read things that make you excited. So today I'm gonna talk about all the books that are very popular that I have no interest in reading and at the end of the video there's gonna be two books that you, yes you watching this video, can still change my mind about. Also by the way this video is definitely inspired by the tag that was made by Nicole, by Nicole, by Nicole. Well, made by Nicole from Nicole and Her Books, which is the anti-TBR tag. I'm not gonna follow the tag exactly, but I just took some inspiration from the questions to come up with my list. So I'll leave a link to that tag in the description. I highly recommend checking out her video. Okay, let's begin. Let us start uh, with a book that is very often <laughs> recommended to me in the comments of my videos. Uh, but that I'm actually not interested in reading. I'm very sorry. But that is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. A lot of people recommend this to me because I say that I love atmospheric dark and eerie stories and this is like an urban fantasy about a bunch of teens that are looking at ley lines and there's like a king and there's some witchy stuff going on. It's apparently very atmospheric and mysterious but the thing is <laughs> I actually started reading this book once and I DNF'd it after 50 pages and I know what you're thinking 50 pages is not enough to DNF it but sometimes you just notice that the book's vibe is not your thing and in those cases I'm just like just gonna let it go so I don't think I'm ever gonna read the Raven Boys. Next up we have Anything by Sarah J Maas. Ho stop I know what you're thinking don't worry this is not gonna be a bashing of Sarah J Maas. I know that it's become kind of popular to hate on Sarah J Maas because she is so popular even though I'm pretty sure the majority of people still love her. I don't hate her books let me just give you a quick history lesson of my experience with Sarah J Maas books. I read Throne of Glass. Yes, I did hate that book. Somehow I did continue to read Crown of Midnight and I absolutely adored that book. Moved on to Air of Fire, realized the story was going into a direction that I really didn't like and then abandoned the series. I did read A Court of Thorns and Roses enjoyed it but definitely didn't love it. I did again <laughs> move on to the second book because it was so hyped, A Court of Wings, A Court of Mist and Fury, and I never got around to finishing that book, so I'm also abandoning that series and I have no interest in continuing those series or reading one of her other works. I've just noticed that I don't really vibe with those books the same way other people do, so not gonna read them. Next one is City of Ashes. I've talked about it a lot so I won't linger on this one too much. I read City of Bones, enjoyed it, never got through City of Ashes, and uh, I have no interest in reading any of Cassandra Clare's other books because there's so many, there's so many Shadowhunter books. I just can't handle the commitments. Next up we have Serpent and Dove. I've seen enough Read with Cindy videos to know that this YA romance is not gonna be my thing. Even though it has enemies to lovers trope which I love because it's a romance between a witch and a witch hinter. This is one of those books that a lot of people adore and a lot of people hate. I just don't want to subject myself to something that I could potentially really hate. Then we have literally all the books by Adam Silvera. He's a super popular YA contemporary author. I've just recently made peace with the fact that YA contemporary is just not really my thing anymore. I noticed that I can't really relate to the characters anymore. Also Adam Silvera's stories are supposedly very tragic and... ew. 
emotions. Next up, we have the A Song of Ice and Fire series. Now, I did watch the show and really enjoyed it, but I just don't think that the books are for me. They're very bleak, very long. Also, there's like eight books. Again, intimidating. And I know that this whole fantasy series kind of hinges not on magic and magical storylines, but more on the political intrigue. And as you know, I'm just not a fan of political intrigue in books. I like it in TV shows, but for some reason, not in books. Definitely never gonna read that entire series. Then we have, in the same vein, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Um, <laughs> I think we're sensing a theme here, and that is that long series just intimidate me and I don't want to even start them. <laughs> and I'm gonna say something very sinful right here, but it is one of those books that if I ever want to experience the Outlander story, I'm probably just gonna watch the TV show. <laughs> Sorry. Then we have the very popular science fiction stories Illuminate and Aurora Rising. I can't really explain why, but there's just nothing about these two series that really attract me. Maybe it's just the space science fiction thing because I'm not very familiar with it, but I do know that if I ever want to get into space science fiction, I'll probably start out with like a more classic story like The Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy. I don't have any funny or eloquent arguments for why I don't want to read them other than I'm just not interested. Okay, next up we have one that might surprise a lot of people. As you all know, I'm a really big fan of Lee Bardugo's books. <laughs> Should I just stay like this <laughs> for the rest of the segment? Just carrying these books, just like, hello, let me continue to talk. Anyway, the books that I will not be reading are The Language of Thorns and The Lives of Saints. The Lives of Saints, I don't know if it's out yet. Maybe it's just out or it's gonna be published soon, but basically these are both short story collections about the Grishaverse by Lee Bardugo. I kind of feel like a fake fan for not buying these books, but the, here's the thing, okay? These are short story collections and I just know that I tend to not read short story collections. I'm not a huge fan of reading short stories. I like finishing full novels. I'm just not really interested in reading these short stories, so I'm not gonna buy them. I don't know. Does that make me a fake fan? I, I don't know. And I don't really get enough satisfaction out of just owning them for my collection, which I know could be a reason for people to get them, but for me that's not enough of a reason, so... Yeah, these are gonna be some Grisha books that I will never read. And that is painful to admit, but sometimes you just gotta be honest with yourself. Okay, next up let's talk about a classic, or like a collection of classics that I will probably never read, and that is Anything by our Mr. Shakespeare. Here's the thing, okay, I know if I'm gonna be fully honest with myself, I am more interested in the idea of having read Shakespeare than actually reading Shakespeare, if you know what I mean. Like, I would love to be able to have read these stories, but um, I've tried reading The Merchant of Venice once, and I just, I can't, I can't get through it. The stories don't interest me enough. And also, like, the old-fashioned English, I just, it feels really stupid to admit it, but I just, I can't really understand it. Just the fact that it's Shakespeare shouldn't be a reason for me to force myself to read them just so I can say, oh, I did read The Merchant of Venice. So, just gonna let it go. Then we have another very, very popular series, just like every book on this list, and that is the Millennium Trilogy, more well known as The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. This is like the Swedish crime novel that is hugely popular, and I'm just not really interested in these kind of like crime books. I did, however, watch the Swedish movies and I did really like them. You know, that's the thing with like crime is one of those genres where I really like it in movies and TV shows, but not in books. Don't really know why. Why are there certain things that I enjoy on screen, but not really in books? Like the same thing with the political intrigue thing. I don't know why that is. It does happen apparently. And then the last one before we get to the ones where you can still change my mind on is Children of Virtue and Vengeance. You may know that I really, really loved Children of Blood and Bone, the first book in this series, 
but I've heard so many people being just completely disappointed by the sequel, Children of Virtue and Vengeance, and I just don't want to like ruin a good experience with a disappointing sequel. So that's why I've just accepted that I'm not gonna continue the series, even though I did really love the first book. And speaking of uh, disappointing sequels, <laughs> that makes me go to the two books that you can still change my mind on, because they are both sequels to books that I really loved that do get kind of bad reviews or very mixed reviews. The first one is a Vengeful by V.E. Schwab because a Vicious is actually one of my favorite books of all time. When I first heard that there was gonna be a sequel, I was so excited. And then when it finally came out, just negative reviews flowing in. Some people say that it's good, just not as good as Vicious, and then other people have said that, you know, it doesn't exist and they pretend it just doesn't exist because they really didn't like it. So this is one that I'm like, you know, I just don't want to ruin Vicious for myself. <laughs> On the other hand, it feels weird to not read the sequel to one of my most beloved books. So please let me know, do you think I should read Vengeful or should I just join the group of people that just pretend this sequel doesn't exist? Let me know, I'm undecided on this one. And the next one that I'm a little bit on the fence about is actually King of Scars. We have the original Grisha trilogy, the Six of Crows duology, and then we have the King of Scars duology. I'm gonna be honest, even though I love all the other books in the Grishaverse, this story didn't really attract me in its premise, and then on top of that, it didn't get very good reviews, like people who loved the other Grisha books didn't really love King of Scars. Because here's the thing, okay? King of Scars follows as the main character, a beloved side character of the original trilogy, Nikolai Lantzov. He's a prince, beloved character, I loved him, and he is the main character in King of Scars. But here's the thing, okay? Please don't hate me, but sometimes there are characters that work really great as side characters that I'm just not really interested in seeing as a main character, and that's what I had with Prince Nikolai. I loved him as a side character, but I'm just not really interested in reading a book completely about him. Sorry! <laughs> so this is also one that I was like, maybe I should just let it slide. But that the, on the other hand, you know, it is the Grishaverse, you know, one of my favorite, how, how you call it, like book universes. <laughs> so let me know, do you think I would like King of Scars? Or do you think I should just, you know, skip it. Let me know in the comments <laughs> what you guys think. Please let me know what some popular books are that you have no interest in reading. I love knowing that. I don't know why. I love watching other people's <laughs> videos about popular books I don't plan on reading. Uh, definitely, again, check out the video made by Nicole in the description. If I ever do end up reading like one of the books on this list, I've been exposed as a fake, I think. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on my social media at the book Leo. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye!